Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty and today I have a fun video in store because we are talking all about the new Hourglass Lighting. Wait now, hold on. This is one of the Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Palettes from Hourglass for Holiday 2023. I picked up the deepest option that is available in their customized leopard palette and I am really excited to try this out for you guys. So I'm going to go through a demonstration, apply this all over my face and give you my final thoughts at the end. I'll also show you this palette up close and personal, show you swatches of this compared up against the palette that I picked up last year which was the Tiger palette. This was also the deepest color story available, so you'll see this. I also pulled out my Volume 3 Lighting Palette, which is the deepest option they have available for their trio of ambient lighting powders. So if you want to see a demonstration, hear my thoughts about this palette, see it in action, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. So as I mentioned, this is one of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Palettes for Holiday 2023. And I say one of because there are three different colorways available for this palette. And actually, this is a little bit different this year, but there are four different palette designs. So there's one color story for lighter and paler skin. There's a medium option for medium skin tones, and then there is a richer version for tan and darker skin. And I say darker because I don't really want to give it credit for being suitable for really rich and deep skin tones. So you can choose any one of these options that best suit your skin tone and whatever look and effect you're going for. And what's special about this year's collection is that there are four different palette designs available on the Hourglass website. Now, if you choose to purchase this from, say, Sephora or another Hourglass retailer, you're just going to get the standard palette design that's associated with that color story that you chose, right? So the standard design for the light option is the jellyfish design with that beautiful teal blue background. Then for the medium option, we have the leopard with the black background, which is gorgeous. And then for the darker option, we have the snake design that has a light robin's egg blue background. Stunning, right? And then as I mentioned, there is a fourth option that is available, but this is exclusive to the Hourglass website only so if you wanted to get this version you have to order it on the hourglass website this one has the beautiful owl artwork with an ivory background and this one is also really stunning again exclusive to the hourglass website which is the only place again that you can customize your palette design and select your color story which is what i did because i was in love with the leopard design but of course i wanted the color story that's available in the snake palette so i went ahead customized my palette got my beautiful leopard with the black background oh my god i love it it's stunning but i have the snake color story which is for darker and richer skin tones. So this is the one we're gonna test out today. Just be mindful that if the color story looks a little bit different than you see on the website, that's the reason. I customized it myself and there are affiliate codes and discount codes available on the Hourglass website that will give you 10% or 20% off. Just keep your eye online for those discount codes. I did end up using a discount code. I will leave it in a comment. You know, I think it's an affiliate code, but I will leave the code down below in case you wanted to use it for yourself so you can get a discount on this palette because it is pricey. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the details for this palette and show you it up close and personal in all its glory. So this again is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Palettes. They retail for $90 a pop. There are six shades included and each shade has a net weight of 0.04 ounce or 1.4 grams 
which is not a ton of product. But remember, this is a baked formula, so the actual weight is going to be lighter than a typical pressed powder option. So the volume will be there, it's just going to give you a lighter weight than you're probably expecting. And the full size hourglass lighting powders are 0.35 ounce or 10 grams. So yes, you're going to technically end up with less product overall in the palette than you would in a full size hourglass powder, which retails for $58. So there's no value for your money here as far as the amount of product that you're getting. The value is really in having the selection of six shades. The price is the price, you're either going to buy it or you're you're not and obviously I purchased it but I know that that price can be a sticking point for a lot of us I understand completely especially since last year these palettes were $85 which was already a steep price point but to have a $5 price increase is kind of a pain point for me especially I was just like absolutely not if I'm not getting a discount I'm not buying it but quite frankly that price point is just never going to be an easy pill to swallow let's go ahead and read the description from the hourglass website so we can hear what they have to say about these palettes so it says here our highly anticipated ambient lighting edit unlocked palettes return feature an artwork that celebrates the beauty of nature and helps unlock change to protect animal rights. Each palette includes new and best selling shades for a glowing complexion in a single palette. The ambient lighting edit unlocked collection includes limited edition palettes featuring snake, leopard, jellyfish, and an exclusive artwork owl that support the non-human rights project in their efforts to secure fundamental rights for animals. Hourglass will donate 5% of annual profits from this collection to the non-human rights project. And now I'll give you the details that are specific to my color story, which is palette number three. It says here, this palette includes ambient lighting powder in radiant light, along with five new shades of blush, bronzer, and highlighter to diffuse, enhance, and add glow to the complexion. So first up, we have an ambient lighting powder. This is an existing shade in radiant light, and it's described as a golden beige. Then we have a new ambient lighting blush. The shade is Coral Haze, and it's described as a pink coral. We have an ambient metallic strobe lighting powder, which is new. This shade is infinite strobe light. It's described as a warm gold. We have an ambient lighting blush, which is also a new shade. So all of these five shades are new. So I'll stop saying that. Sunbeam is the name of this shade and it's described as a rich peach. Then we have an ambient strobe lighting blush in mystic flush. This is described as a mid-tone pink coral. And then the final shade is an ambient lighting bronzer in solar bronze. This is described as a rich bronze. Now I wanted to give you a little bit of a background on ambient lighting powders from Hourglass since they've been on the market for so long. A lot of people are new to Hourglass, they may be new to makeup, and they're not quite sure about these ambient lighting powders. And we weren't quite sure either when these first launched, and I was around when they first launched, people weren't quite sure what these powders were meant to do, right? They're not a setting powder, right? They are finishing powders, which means they go on after the rest of your makeup. They're meant to finish the skin. And that ambient lighting name was chosen because it's descriptive of what the product is meant to do. It's meant to mimic ambient lighting, your surrounding lighting, right? So if you will notice their original powder, so the ambient lighting powders, that are meant as finishing powders for all over the face, you'll notice that they have names such as dim light. So mimicking dim light, you have incandescent light. Again, mimicking incandescent light. There was one called mood light, which was meant to mimic, again, mood lighting. You have luminous light, diffused light, and they all have different undertones. So you'll have a pinky undertone, a more yellow undertone, some had more luminosity to them, and they expanded the range once people started to fall in love with the powders. So they expanded to include blushes, and their blushes were on the marbled side, and they were stunning. I absolutely love the initial launch. They give this lovely flush 
to the skin that's not overly pigmented. Again, it's meant to mimic lighting and just give you that kind of ambient look to your skin. Nothing too fake, nothing that looks like makeup. And the formula of these powders were meant to play into that as well because they're baked, they're lightweight, they're airy, so they're never going to look heavy on the skin, which is really the selling point for these powders. They also then added their bronzers, which again, just meant to give color to the skin without being overwhelming. They also have their highlighter powders, which are their luminous powders, to add a little bit more glow. They call those their strobe lighting powders. And they had a point where they had this intense strobe lighting powder with micro fine glitter in it. And I, oh God, I hated those so much. But they've kind of toned those down a little bit. They're more of a natural glow on the skin now. They have more of a luminous, iridescent sheen rather than a glittery sheen. All right. So with that being said, do you understand the concept now? These powders are meant to be lightweight. They're meant to finish your skin. So you apply them after a setting powder to add lift and light to the face rather than to set your makeup, all right? So with that in mind, let's grab our palette, all right? And I did grab the little travel brush that came with this collection. So this is their travel powder brush. It's in Snake. I don't think they have any different versions of this. It's a synthetic bristle brush. It's more of a floppy brush. Again, meant to be used with these kinds of powders, which are finishing powders. They're meant to be applied in a light, airy way rather than like packed on or baked on, right? All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration. And I already did my brows and my eyeshadow, but I'm starting off with a pretty blank canvas for my skin. I did apply a little bit of primer, just my L'Oreal 24 hour matte setter primer, just in my T-zone area, nothing too crazy. But I wanted to go in with another Hourglass product to start us off. So I'm using their Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. The shade I have is number 13. And I figured that since we're using an Hourglass product for this review, let's go ahead and keep it Hourglass on the face as well. Now, I will say this complexion product is more on the neutral side and you will see it once I start applying it on my skin. It definitely leans cooler, a little bit gray on my skin, but it's a thin product so it melts easily into my skin and it kind of transforms. It doesn't give me full coverage so the difference in undertone isn't really obvious. So I'm just using this to even out my skin and even out the canvas to begin with. All right, so let me go in with a little bit of concealer. This is actually a new one. I'm just testing it out since I just picked it up, but I won't be covering it in this video like as a review. This is from Kofi. It is their main match concealer and the shade I'm using is Faluda Fizz. Don't ask me about the name. I just know that's the name of the shade and I'll just blend that out under my eyes. And since I have oily skin, I'm going to set the majority of my face. So I'm just using my Kosas powder. This is the Cloud Set powder. It's very lightweight. It's very thin, so it won't interfere much with the product that we're going to go in from Hourglass. It will just set the foundation down so there are no greasy or oily spots left behind. All right, so there you have it. I feel like I should just do my mascara now and then come back. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll be right back. All right, so we are back and my mascara has been applied as well as a little bit of lip gloss. And on our skin again, we have that light layer of the Hourglass Skin Tint along with a dusting of my Kosas powder to set everything down. But there's no bronzer, blush, or highlighter on my skin just yet because of course we're going in with our palette. So let's go ahead and grab our palette. Mm -hmm. 
Their first powder up is the finishing powder in Radiant Light. To be honest with you, I think that's a little bit too shimmery for me to use it as a finishing powder. That's not what I would use that for, but let's play along. All right, let me turn on my light a little bit. I think that should give you a better feel for the powder. So let's go in with that first powder, Radiant Light. And I'm gonna pick it up with the brush. And the brush is small enough to get into the pans, which is one thing you have to consider with face palettes. You wanna have a brush that's gonna fit just into that pan, rather than using a brush that's too large that will then cross mix the shades and this brush fits right in the pens are large enough though that i feel like a normal face brush should be able to pick these products up without again cross contamination so i picked up a little bit of this on my brush and i'm just going to dust that just on the center of my forehead i don't really want to do too much because again i wouldn't necessarily use this as a finishing powder but what you can do is just lightly dust all over your face with this type of powder, the finishing powder. It's just meant to, again, finish the skin and give you the look of ambient light. And this powder, it's, it's not matte, okay? There's a little bit of micro shimmer to it. And if I look in my magnifying mirror, I can see it. But looking at it from like a distance, it doesn't really look sparkly or shimmery, but I wouldn't go all over my face with this powder at all. If anything, I would go in with one of their other powders. This is Dim Light. This has more of a full-on finishing powder appearance because it's not glowy, it's not shimmery, it's strictly a satin powder. So it will give a beautiful finish to the skin. And again, it's lightweight, so there's not gonna be like this heavy pigmented color product on your face. All right, so we can skip that dim light. I'm not too enthused about that one, but we have three blush shades. I'm gonna do, let's start with number five, which is Mystic Flush. That one is described as a mid-tone pink coral, which I think is kind of true. It's like a rosy blush. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh my God. That is stunning. This is just a Smashbox brush. It is actually a foundation brush, so it's going to be a little bit stiffer. That is a stunning color. Oh my God, that is such a pretty color. I really like that. It's very subtle as you can see, right? There you have it on my cheek very pretty and this is a new shade all right next let's go in with number two which is coral haze all right so coral haze is a pink coral again but this one is marbled so you'll have different vein in let's try that one out so it has some darker kind of mauvey vein in through it and then more pinky like a lighter pink Ooh, that one, let me blend that out a little bit better. That one's pretty too. It looks very similar to the other shade, but it's a little bit lighter. That's what I can tell you. It's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit of that lighter pink in the vein in gives it a little bit more of a light flush of the skin, but they're both pinky curls. So if you're going for more subtle, I would go with this shade versus this shade, but both are really pretty. Oh my God. All right, let me go over with my foundation brush on this side just to kind of erase some of that color. Not too much though, but just so we can go in with the third blush, which is number four Sunbeam, which is described as a rich peach. Now this one says it's just a blush but I feel ooh, I feel like it's one of the strobe lighting blushes because their strobe powders have more shimmer and sheen to them that is so pretty so it's gonna glow more on the skin it's not just gonna be a satin or a matte blush it's gonna be more of a glowy blush that is so freaking pretty oh my god so it's like a peachy pink glow that is 
really pretty. Oh my god. That is so pretty. I would use the... Mm, would I use that on its own? No. Why? When I have the full palette. So what I would do, which I'm going to do now, is grab the two blushes because, you know, same difference. I'm going to go between the two. They look very similar. Use that as like the color on my cheeks and then use the glowy option as a topper oh that is so pretty so they'll mix in and give you like a coraly peach combination which i think is stunning so these three blushes kind of coordinate together you can mix and match them or wear them alone i think that's very pretty what do you think i think that's very pretty and you can blend them out you see how easily they blend out so they're not overwhelming. That is, that is pretty. I like that. Okay, so, so far the blushes work well. I think this will work on richer skin tones, especially the sunbeam shade, that glowy one. That would look stunning on deeper skin tone. But remember, it's not going to give you the same effect, right? And even the first shade we used, which was the Mystic Flush, I feel like that will still give a nice color on the cheek on a richer skin tone. It just won't be a punchy, like, rich color. I think it would still work, though. All right, let's go in with the bronzer. And I'll quickly show you a comparison of last year's palette and this year's palette. The bronzers look different, right? You can kind of tell looking at them in, yeah, in this shot. The bottom one is our new version, and the top one is last year's version. So last year's is a little bit richer. You'll see it's a little darker and it's a little pinkier. So it's more on the neutral side while the bottom one, the new one, is more on the golden side. Now swatched out, these look very similar. They look very similar to each other and even compared to the Ambient Lighting Palette Volume 3, which is their deepest option that is available, those two shades, and I swatched them out again, look very similar. Oh. There they go. Look very similar. The Ambient Lighting Edit 3 is a little bit richer. It looks a little bit richer, but swatched out, they look very similar, except that this one is a little bit more on the golden side, which I was actually happy to see because I've always wanted like a more golden version of this powder. We're going to try it out, see if it actually shows up on my skin because it doesn't look very rich at all. And this one has a little bit of a glow to it. It's not glowy, like shimmery, but it's not a flat matte. Oh, okay. So it does show up. And again, with these ambient lighting powders, they're not going to be extremely pigmented. You'll see a little bit of a difference there with my skin oh so it's gonna be subtle and that's what i like about these powders so if you're a beginner or you don't like intense makeup you're just looking for something very subtle very wearable these palettes will be your friend because they're gonna give you the effect of a bronzer or of a blush without being overwhelming they're just gonna give you that kiss of color, especially with a bronzer, right? A bronzer, you can get away with it just being a touch darker than your skin. So it doesn't need to be a rich bronzer. It can be a subtle color that will give you, you know, a little bit of a, oh, my bronzer is way too low right there, child. It will give you that kiss of warmth to your skin without being too dark, which is kind of what you want anyway, right? Let me just go over it with their brush just to blend it out. I don't think this brush is necessary. As you see, I'm using other brushes in my collection. So this brush isn't necessary. I just wanted to get it. It's so cute. It has a little snake. It's a travel size. And it's a good like finishing powder brush just to go over your face. And Mel Thompson, oh my God, rest in peace, Mel. She had this technique where she would go in with one of her animal hair brushes, like a squirrel hair brush, and she would just buff over her skin. Not with product, but just with the brush to go over and buff everything together so that it looked flawless. And she always looked flawless. Oh my God, she left us with some really great tips and tricks. So if you wanted to watch her videos on like buffing technique, search her channel, you'll find it. 
but you know it just blends and buffs everything together I kind of buffed away my blush trying to blend out that bronzer because I went overboard so I'm just gonna go back in with the the blushes just to pop a little bit more on the cheeks and again I'm just mixing the two I really love this like the glowy blush mix it looks so pretty because these colors like it's a beautiful pinky coral right and then this little peachy topper makes it ultra pretty oh my god all right all right all right let's go in now with the highlighter which is infinite strobe light so remember i said their strobe lighting powders are going to be the glowy option so this one is uh, described as a warm gold now it doesn't well it kind of is a warmer gold but it's not a yellow gold so if you're thinking it's too warm it's too no it coordinates with the other shades because we have this more warm tone ah oh, this more warm tone blush the corals are more warm tone they're not really on the cool tone side so it's going to mesh well with them and even the bronzer is more on the warm tone side that is freaking pretty this is a bk beauty 113 brush and i think this is their travel size because it's a shorter handle but this is my kind of highlighter. Don't play with me, okay? Look at this. It's so pretty, right? It's definitely a highlighter. It definitely gives a glow to the cheek. But it's not sparkly. It's not overwhelming. So you can look healthy. And you see that look? You see it? Hits the light. Lighting edit. You see? Hits the light. Ambient lighting. Gives a glow. But without being harsh I love that ooh I really love that oh my god so again you can kind of leave it stark and not blend it as much I'm a blender though so I'm gonna blend my face products so here you have it I think yeah this is this is pretty hold on let me do a little zoom out and we'll finish up with my final thoughts all right, we are back. I went ahead and popped on some lashes and some hoop earrings because I want to pop on camera, okay? I want to be that extra person. Anyway, here's the final look and we can jump into my final thoughts. Let me give you another once over. The cheeks, the hairline for the bronzer, just the skin overall, right? Let's talk about it. <sighs> The first thing I'm going to talk about is the price point. $90, what are we doing? What are we doing here, okay? I understand inflation and things are getting pricier. Fine. Okay, fine. But at this point, I feel like brands are price gouging. There's no reason we needed to have a $5 increase on these palettes. But now they've started their affiliate program and they have discounts. So are they trying to offset that? I don't know. But at the end of the day, you're either going to buy it or you're not. You're either an hourglass girly or you're not. And it seems that I'm a little bit of an hourglass girly. If that's not you, that's completely understandable. If you don't think $90 is worth it, completely, completely agree with you and your thoughts, okay? However, I grabbed it because one, I wanted the leopard palette. This is tin, by the way, so it's not some cheap plastic. So the quality is there with the packaging and the powders. If you're spending the $90, you're getting a high quality product, okay? You won't be wasting your money on some flimsy throwaway palette. So the quality is there, but that price point is still going to hit hard. Use a discount code, get it on sale. Do what you need to to get a discount on this because I'm telling you right now, $90 is not where it's at. But I'm happy that I was able to customize it. And I love that they have four options available now. You even have this beautiful owl. I, I was thinking about getting the owl. And I, woo child, mm, I might, I might. But, you know, I didn't. But to get the little leopard with this black packaging, stunning. And the sticker on the back, right, does coordinate with the color story that you select. So just a heads up, if you customize it, you're going to get the right labeling on your palette and everything. And I love that I kind of have matching palettes now because I have the tiger and now I have a leopard. Cute, right? Oh my god, so stunning. The powders themselves, again, 
stunning what I love about this particular color story which is true for only this color story so this is palette number three this one has five new shades so out of all six we have five new shades so if you have an hourglass collection if you already own some hourglass palettes if you bought a palette last year you're getting five new shades so you're not going to get duplicates here the only shade that you might duplicate is that finishing powder in radiant light which i am not duplicate i don't think am i oh my god no no i'm not i'm not duplicating that so even though i have ambient lighting powders like in singles and I have this palette from last year and I even have the ambient lighting palette volume 3 from a couple of years ago I'm not duplicating any shades in this particular palette however in the other two palettes there is only one new shade in palette number two which is the actual leopard palette that one only has one new shade so make sure you go through the shades if you're going to pick this up go through the shades to see if it's worth it to you because in the number two palette we have dim light which i own as a single we have celestial strobe light which i believe i own as well mood exposure which i definitely own we have iridescent rose which is a warm rose i think i've owned that we have ethereal flush and lustrous bronze light so that's going to be like a medium bronzer and if you've never tried hourglass you don't have their palettes you don't have the other powders this may be a good option for you because you get to try out like a variety of their powders you get best-selling shades in their blushes you get best-selling shades in their lighting powders and you get a beautiful bronzer and there's one new shade so five of the shades already exist but one is new so make sure the shades aren't being replicated in your collection in the jellyfish palette which is palette number one the lightest version this one may be worth it to you because there are three new shades all right so three are existing shades three are new we have diffused light which is an existing ambient lighting powder but we have a new blush in rose fusion which looks really pretty we have a new metallic strobe lighting powder it's one of those glowing powders a highlighter some may say that one's opal strobe light which may be a great highlighter for you we have a new bronzer which is a matte warm bronze again they're leaning away from cool tones to more warmer bronzers we have diffused heat which is a vibrant poppy that's an existing shade which i love that was one of my favorite blushes from them and then ethereal light is just a lighting powder like a finishing powder that one is an existing shade so again make sure it's worth it to you if you go through these shades and you say you know what all these shades look like they'll work for me they're not duplicating shades that I already have or even if they are duplicating shades I don't mind having an extra of that one in the palette because it's like one and done so think about it that way approach it that way but your best bang for your buck if you want a ton of new shades is going to be palette number three which is in the standard snake packaging all right it's a beautiful palette design too so I mean you can't go wrong there but that's the one with the most new shades five new shades and then number one which is the jellyfish that has three new shades so just keep that in mind as far as the actual performance the application just how these look on the skin I have always loved the ambient lighting powders because I'm more of a subtle complexion product kind of person I don't necessarily love an intense blush I like a blush that I can control and I can blend out into like a really natural finish I also don't like an intense highlighter so their lighting powders their strobe powders are perfect for me so I love that and this bronzer shade actually works for me now is this the best bronzer for deeper skin no is it going to work on richer skin tones no manage your expectations here if you really wanted a good bronzer that's going to work on deeper skin you're better off with ambient lighting three is that what it's called lighting palette volume three but this bronzer is not that far off from that one right as far as depth goes and it shows up on my skin tone i think if you're a couple levels deeper than me it will still work on you but if you have a really rich skin tone it's not going to work that powder is probably going to work as a finishing powder and that's okay that's the thing too they don't have to be used in the way that they're recommended right so the bronzer that's in this palette that's meant to be a bronzer 
Someone with a richer skin tone can use this as a beautiful finishing powder or they can use it as a blush, you know? So depending on the depth of your skin, you can use these for different reasons. But I feel like the blushes in this will still kind of work on deeper skin tones. And then the lighting powders, the highlighters will also work on deeper skin tone. It's just that bronzer, you'll have to be a little bit more creative with using it because it's going to kind of be just a finishing powder on rich skin tone. But it's not bad as far as like how it looks on the skin. Everything looks airbrushed and just light. It looks like my skin but better. And I love that about these powders. So it's all up to you, price point, and if the color stories match up to your expectations and what you're looking for from these. But I like this palette and I like that they're including like richer shades in the deeper palettes now that will work on darker skin tone. But I mean, they're not all the way there yet. They need to get some richer powders for really rich skin tones. But overall, I like it. $90 stung. It really did, but I got a discount code. So that helped out and I got to customize my palette. And so now I have a little twin pair of palettes, which I really love. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you've picked this up. Are you interested in picking this up? What are your thoughts? Have you tried it? Are you interested? Like, give me all the details. Let me know what's going on, girl. And I'm gonna leave links on where you can pick it up. So I know it's gonna be available at Sephora and definitely on the Hourglass website. It may also be available at Ulta, but we'll see. I will link it down below either way. So if you're thinking about picking this palette up, please consider using my affiliate links, which will give me a small kickback, but it won't change the sale price. It will just give me a little something, something to put right back into the content. So I do appreciate you guys using my links. I'll also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys.